Following the monumental launch of Starship 24, the launch pad at Starbase has suffered significant damage. In order to prepare for the next launch and make sure the pad is not destroyed once more, SpaceX has devoted all its resources to renovating and repairing the launch pad. So far, they have made great strides in installing new designs, bringing them one step closer to the orbital Starship launch. So what is SpaceX going to do in order to fix the pad? Will SpaceX's pad effectively operate after going through the change? Stay tuned as we dive into these questions and more in this episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX recently made a significant stride in its Starship development with the installation of a massive water plate for the Starship OLM. This water plate plays a crucial role in the spacecraft's cooling system during launch and re-entry, but there wouldn't be much to say if things didn't go so fast. In just two months, they repaired the OLM, installed all the necessary piles and constructed the water supply system. And most recently, they did the job of filling the crater below the rocket launch platform. The concentrated efforts, spanning approximately 15.3 hours, akin to running a marathon, have resulted in a significant volume of concrete. To be precise, a total of 132 trucks were received on June 25th, followed by an even larger number of 171 trucks on the 3rd of July. The cumulative volume of poured concrete reached 2,302 cubic meters with an estimated weight of 5,411 tons. Indeed, it is a substantial figure with the concrete volume equivalent to the weight of a fully loaded starship. In total, the piles will support 10,000 tons. Meanwhile, the legendary water-cooled steel plate that we could only see through 3D renderings has appeared. There are a total of seven plates to be mounted, including six small plates plates and a single center plate. Two layers of, of thick, uh, very thick plate steel uh, that, that are also sort of, uh, perforated on the upper side so that you, you have what is basically a, a massive, super strong steel shower head pointing up. Sort of steel, the mega steel pancake. Um, this thing's a beast. Noted Elon Musk during a Twitter Spaces event when talking about the center plate. It's huge, at about 9 to 10 meters across. Those holes on the front are about 8 inches each. The center plate's thickness measures approximately 2,307 pixels, which, when converted using a specific formula, corresponds to approximately 386 millimeters or 15.19 inches. To account for any potential inaccuracies, rounding up to 15.2 inches seems reasonable. Notably, since the usage of imperial units is prevalent in GSE-related matters, this rounded figure aligns conveniently with the established system. And it's all thanks to Ryan Hansen Space for the useful information we provided here. Keep up with the good work. With each meticulous and expertly executed step of the installation process, the stage is now set for further progress. Alongside the arrival of the steel plates at the launch site, the necessary three manifolds are also transported to the launch site and eagerly installed. A fascinating sight awaits as they commence twisting the shower head, giving rise to an intriguing structure. The manifolds were carefully lowered into position and subsequently welded to the center section, resulting in the formation of a cohesive assembly. However, reaching all the edges, including the bottom for welding, is challenging since workers cannot access them from below with everything resting on the concrete. This is likely the reason why the top plate of the manifold assemblies has been cut shorter. Workers will weld the bottom plate from the top side, adding any necessary additional plates for the channels, before adding the top plate to complete the sealing process. Currently, the speed at which Starbase and SpaceX are moving is truly captivating. It's downright astonishing, and it's even safe to say that we can witness them complete everything in just two to three days. Why, by the time we post this video, they have surely prepared for the next steps. In all honesty, it's an eagerly anticipated development development that will greatly contribute to the efficiency of the ground infrastructure with its intricate engineering design. Dr. Philip Metzger, senior research physicist at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, gave key insights into SpaceX's use of water-cooled steel plate as a solution for their Starship pad issues. He has drawn from his own experiences in the field. Regarding the water-cooled steel plate, Dr. Metzger emphasizes its ability to 
to effectively redistribute heat. He explains that the heat generated by the Raptor engines would be distributed fast enough on the surface of the steel plate, preventing localized melting. This means that the steel plate can withstand the intense heat produced during the entire launch event without significant damage or deformation. Additionally, the advantage of water cooling is preventing the steel plate from reaching its melting point. The continuous flow of water would actively extract heat from the plate in real time, ensuring it remains at a safe temperature. This innovative cooling mechanism reduces the need for excessive amounts of steel, making the solution more efficient and cost-effective. Furthermore, the water-cooled steel plates address the issue of gas pressure and eliminate problems associated with the concrete slab beneath the launch pad. When the ground underneath the pad experiences gas pressure, which occurs when rocket exhaust seeps through cracks in the concrete, it pressurizes the soil beneath and causes the concrete slabs to lift. This disruption of concrete flow and the potential for uncontrolled failure pose serious risks. As a concrete slab begins to lift, it creates a larger crack, and the gas hitting the edge of the slab comes to a sudden stop. This abrupt halt converts the kinetic energy of the gas into super high pressure. Consequently, more gas is driven into the space below the slab, causing further lifting and damage. As the concrete is eaten away, it creates a additional pathways for gas to penetrate and disrupt the flow, amplifying the conversion of kinetic energy into heat and high pressure. This process can escalate into an uncontrolled patch failure. Therefore, by designing an efficient system for the steel plates to disperse exhaust, SpaceX ensures that it doesn't concentrate in a manner that worsens the lifting of concrete slabs. This meticulous management of gas pressure allows SpaceX to prevent any uncontrolled failure of the launch pad Structure. And now we move on to our final bit of coverage in today's news. One of the primary concerns is the reflection of sound waves and the subsequent shaking of the launch structure. The initial sound that occurs during engine ignition creates a shock wave that bounces off the launch pad and runs up the sides of the vehicle. This leads to significant stress on the entire structure, potentially causing damage. The impact of the initial overpressure, or IOP, adds to the challenge of launch acoustics. The IOP, also known as the shock wave from engine ignition, can have tremendous power and has previously caused issues in space shuttle launches. It is essential to mitigate the effects of the IOP to prevent structural damage to the vehicle. To do that, when the booster engines ignite, immediate measures are necessary to extinguish the flames. If it was like any other launch facility, they would design and implement a water deluge system, which involves flooding the launch pad with substantial water flows. This is necessary because rocket engines produce extremely high temperatures reaching up to 2800 degrees Celsius, which can easily melt and damage most materials, including the launch pad. The water jets of the deluge system are able to largely absorb and suppress the effect of the shock wave. The sound suppression system can reduce the noise level from 200 decibels down to the more manageable and less harmful 142. But at Starbase, there is already a a smaller system called FireX, dedicated to managing any fires under the pad with pipes running throughout the OLM. However, the water jets sprayed onto the launch pad have limited effectiveness due to the immense power generated by the 33 engines and the large size of the launch structure. Spraying water from a height of 20 meters above the ground where the engine bells are located would be a slow process. FireX employs a blend of water and gaseous nitrogen to effectively deprive flames of the oxygen necessary for their combustion. This method helps prevent the accumulation of oxygen and methane thereby mitigating the formation of an explosive mixture within the launch pad area. By eliminating the presence of these combustible elements, the risk of accidental ignition is significantly reduced. The combination of water and nitrogen in the FireX system ensures a safer environment by minimizing the potential for fire and explosion hazards. By employing this method, explosive gas mixtures can be rapidly neutralized beneath the launch pad, swiftly extinguishing any remaining fire. 
years. So this approach minimizes the impact and disperses sound waves, reducing their effects on the launch structure. Importantly, this approach does not require excessive water or an on-site retention pond, similar to the second Starship launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.